Welcome to an introduction to Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a website that allows us to take instructional videos that we've created and embed questions or notes for student feedback. We can also use this as a way to personalize our assessments and make one-of-a-kind instructional materials that our students can access at any point. We're going to begin by going to edpuzzle.com. From here, you'll have to sign up or create an account. If you've already created an account, we're going to choose Login. You can choose to either log in as a student or a teacher. Obviously, we'll want to log in today as a teacher. From here, Edpuzzle gives me a lot of options that have already been created. If I don't find what I'm looking for, I can use the search bar at the top and type in something like, let's say, negative numbers. From here, I may be able to find exactly what I need. Along with the video content that's already available for us or things that we create, Edpuzzle embeds a gradebook right into their website so I could search by the start date or the due date. There's also a tab for my classes where I can access the class that I've already created or create a new class. Let's go back to content. We're going to start by selecting my content and you can see that I have a number of videos already created. If I don't find what I'm looking for immediately, I can search using the search bar at the top or sort by the date. We're going to add new content today. To add new content, we come over to the blue button at the top. Add content. From here, we can create a new video or upload an existing video. We could even create a student project to be reviewed later. I'm going to upload a video today. Once I've selected to upload a video, I'm going to choose the file that I want. Um, let's upload Introduction to Teams today. When I select the file, it begins uploading automatically. If we fast forward a little bit, I can go to My Videos and select the video that I've uploaded. Now that I have my video available to me, I have a couple options on the right hand side. I can assign it to a class, duplicate it, edit it, or even delete it. Now I select the area that I want in the video and click edit. From here I can trim a video down, I could do a new voiceover, or I can add my questions. Now that I've selected that I want to add a question, I have three options to choose from. I can add a multiple choice, an open-ended, or a note to remind students of something later. I select the portion of the video that I want to put a question in, and then choose the type of question I want. For a multiple choice, the first box is for my question. The following boxes, I put the different answers that I want in. From here, I select which is correct and which is incorrect. I can even add more choices as I see fit. So let's add a third option in here. Once I have my three options and I know which one is correct and incorrect, I can even add feedback. If a student selects the correct one, I could tell them that it's right or why it's right. If they choose an incorrect one, I could give them immediate feedback as to why that might be wrong. When I'm done with my question, I click save, and now I see a dot in the time bar representing the question as well as the question below. I select a new area of my video to input a question. Let's try and open it. From here, I put the information I'm looking for. Let's say write five ways that you can use Teams in your day-to-day. -day. When I click Save, I can see that that question has embedded itself right into my video, and now I sit back and wait for student responses. In another portion of the video, we'll add a note. This is a place where I can put something that's very important that I want students to pull out of the video, some very, very specific detail. There is also a microphone at the bottom that I can input my own voice or an audio note. I save that, and it also embeds in my video. Now that I've created my video, I'm ready to assign. It's in this place that I'll find all of the classes that I've created, and I can choose the start date and the due date for the assignment, or any period of time that I wish it to be open. There's also a toggle switch at the bottom here, which will prevent students from just skipping forward to the questions. They'll have to sit and watch all of the information before answering.
Another option to share is through public links. Here's the part where I am going to choose my copy link from this section, and I can put it into somewhere, say, Teams. If I go under my posts, and just put it in as I would any other conversation, you can see that it embeds itself right into my Teams where my students could access it. When they click it, it will load automatically. As soon as it loads, students are able to then go through the video and answer the questions. It's just that easy.